what happens when I turn my 4G terminal on or off? That is the question we are going to answer in this video. A 4G terminal has a permanent IP connectivity, as long as we don't, for example, turn on flight airplane mode. As soon as it is powered up, the terminal requests the establishment of bearers for the various tunnels for its IP connectivity. The default bearer is then maintained independently of how the terminal is used. To establish connectivity, an EPS connectivity request message is sent by the terminal. In reality, as we will see, this message is included in the attachment message. In other words, the attachment and the establishment of connectivity are made at the same time. First, let's look at how things are when we consider a powered down terminal. It's important for the network to know whether a terminal can be reached or not. Therefore, we have the notion of state which is memorized for each terminal. This state, when attachment has not been made, is called EMM deregistered, which means that the cell phone is not reachable. It could be powered down or in flight airplane mode. We can imagine that the terminal has already been used and that it already has a security association and a temporary identity here, GUTI1. The MME memorizes the state of the terminal and the context elements. To attach to the network and request a connection, we'll have the following messages. The terminal sends an EMM attach request with GUTI1 and puts in the same message an ESM PDN connectivity request message which has a different meaning. That means the UE requests connectivity to the external IP network. It will indicate in the message the type of connectivity it wants. IPv4 or IPv6. We will have inside this procedure the establishment of the S1 AP connection. We are not going to go into detail here and we are going to assume that the terminal communicates with the MME. Of course, all messages go through the EnodB. What the MME does is analyze the type of connectivity requested, IPv4 or IPv6, find the default APN, access point name, which is stored in the subscriber profile, and select the serving gateway and the P gateway. The MME then creates a control tunnel with the S gateway using the create session request message. Inside the subscriber IMC, the type of IP requested and the APN are indicated. The S gateway passes on the request to the P gateway. And we can imagine here that there is a DHCP type mechanism to automatically allocate the IP address. DHCP meaning Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. 
the message we see and the following message includes the TIDs to establish the tunnels. The P gateway indicates the IP address in its response to the request for a tunnel. As soon as this message is received, the two pieces of equipment know the TIDs of the opposite end and the S5, S8 bearer is established. The S gateway sends a response still transporting the allocated IP address. This IP address will be memorized by the MME. The MME will probably renew the temporary identity choosing a different GUTI and will send the following messages. First, an EMM attach accept message with the GUTI, GUTI2, for the terminal. This means, okay, you are taken into account by the network. And second, an ESM activate bearer context request message with the IP address, the response to the previous request. The terminal stores the IP address and the GUTI and will then acknowledge indicating the attachment was successful and that the establishment of the context, in other words, the IP address has been stored. And the MME will then indicate to the S gateway that it must establish the S1 bearer, the data tunnel between the inert B and the serving gateway. At the end of the procedure, we have a terminal in the EMM registered state, meaning it has been taken into account, it has a security association and an IP address. The context is updated by the MME which retains the IP address and the security association, of course, corresponding to the terminal. The S gateway and the P gateway also have context elements since they should store the TIDs. This is the table we saw last week. Tunnels and connections are established. And we have this diagram that we will see in a lot of the videos. The radio bearer with the signaling bearer between the UE and the inert B. The S1 AP connection. The tunnel for control. Only a data tunnel called a bearer between the E node B and the S gateway. Another bearer between the S gateway and the P gateway and the tunnel for control. We must also consider the detach procedure. If, for example, I activate flight airplane mode or if I power down, the terminal makes a detach request. All the connections and tunnels will be released. And the MME, as well as the terminal with its SIM card, will keep the security associations and the GUTI in memory. The procedure works like this. Here, we have the entire set of bearers that have been established. The terminal sends a detach request indicating its GUTI and as soon as there an acknowledgement on the radio 
channel. As soon as it is sure that the base station has taken the message into account, it can power down. The radio bearer has now been released. There is no longer a radio connection, but all the resources in the network must be released. So, the INADB sends a message to the MME indicating the disconnection. The MME will, for that subscriber, identified by his GUTI, take the subscriber data and release the part of the context related to the bearer that had been established. But it will retain the GUTI and the security keys. The MME now notifies the S-Gateway. It asks it to erase everything in its memory. I mean, the TIDs of the various tunnels. And the S-Gateway also sends a delayed session request message to release the S5, S8 bearer. The S-Gateway when it receives the response from the P-Gateway, when it has released the context, notifies the MME, which requests that the inert B release the bearer between the S-Gateway and the inert B. So, all the bearers have been released. At the end, the MME notifies the HSS that the subscriber is no longer reachable. 